If wisdom is by definition the right application of knowledge, we are living in a time of unprecedented increase in knowledge. And it becomes obvious that there's not much wisdom around these days. High, technolo high technology is, is helpless when it comes to deterring the rapid increase in wickedness. There are two categories of wisdom. There is that wisdom of the world from below and there's the wisdom from heaven above. And life in this advanced age is far more complicated than back in the middle of the 20th century. My 56 Chevy took me anywhere I wanted to go. And guess what? It didn't have a computer. I don't know how we did it. But reportedly, in this advanced age with all the new gadgetry we have, 300 people die every day from fentanyl poisoning. It's been reported that more young folks have died from this poison than all the soldiers in all of our wars. And officials may have the knowledge to do something about it, but they don't have the wisdom and they don't have the will. So here's a sample. If we're going to talk about heavenly wisdom, let's first of all contrast it with, with worldly wisdom. Here's a sample of worldly wisdom. It's something that you and I have no part in. Defund police and call it equity. Worldly wisdom. Stop population growth by sterilizing young children and call it gender reassignment. Remove sovereign boundaries allowing drug cartel to invade our country and call it compassion. Have your staunchest enemy manufacture 90% of your medication and call it a new world order. Allow treasonous politicians to destroy your country and call it globalism. Pay young black men millions of dollars to stop them from committing crimes such as stealing high dollar items and call it reparations. Make LGBTQ plus the law of the land and force churches to go along or be shut down and call it love. Cancel the culture that made the United States of America the best nation in the world and do all these things in order to usher in a new world order. That, my friend, is worldly wisdom. Our Lord addressed this issue 2,000 years ago in John chapter 15. He said, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. It's their version of wisdom. So we're surrounded by evil forces that constantly attempt to defeat us. That being the case, what hope do we have? Well, the Christian has hope. Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And 1 John 4, 4, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And then listen to the wise man in Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Those whose hope is in the wisdom of this world are left without any hope. But there is a wisdom of the world and the worldly wisdom and human cleverness are limited in their approach and useless in their effectiveness, this world's wisdom will take you down the wrong pathway. It will leave you stranded at a dead end and you will be there without hope. That's the wisdom of the world. When it comes to trusting human government, we best be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. The wisdom we desperately need in America comes from another world. Paul sheds light on our dilemma in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 18. He says, let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, 
Let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. But our text that we're going to look at this morning is Proverbs chapter 2. If you'd like to turn your Bible there to Proverbs chapter 2, we're looking at the first seven verses. Solomon says, My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. Verse 6 says, the Lord gives wisdom. Now we looked at the world's wisdom and it seems foolish to us. But God's wisdom seems foolish to the world. So how are we going to get this wisdom that we need in a time like this? Well, the Lord gives wisdom. It's not for sale. Can't buy it. Theories and philosophies are not the source of life-changing wisdom. You're not going to find it there. The kind of wisdom that we need from heaven does not come with age. You've heard of wise old men. I've seen some old men who were not all that wise. The kind of wisdom does not come with age. It doesn't come with, it's not inherited, it's not in your DNA. You can't download it. It is a matter of acknowledgement and acknowledging your need, saying, God, I need wisdom. And who among us right now does not need wisdom from above? Now, James tells us in James chapter 1, verse 5, if any man, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. <clears throat> so this is the source of wisdom. Now, a four-year degree in college these days may cost $100,000. And a great deal of knowledge may be acquired by getting that degree. Great wisdom may be developed in the application of that knowledge. But 1 Corinthians chapter 3 says the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. James addresses the source of heavenly wisdom. It is from God. God gives wisdom spiritually. When a man lacks heavenly vision and heavenly wisdom, he is destitute of life-changing wisdom. He is deprived of devil-defeating wisdom. So how is he going to get this heavenly vision and heavenly wisdom? He is going to have to ask in faith, nothing wavering, it is decreed in heaven that, that man cannot know God by the means of human wisdom. Divine wisdom cannot be derived from any of earth's con convincing systems. It is only given. It is free. It is given to the man or woman acknowledging his or her inability to face the conflicts and the circumstances of life as we are now. And the Father in heaven bestows this powerful, precious gift called wisdom. The blessing is when spiritual destitution becomes spiritual revelation and the wisdom of God is given at no charge. This miracle takes place through a supernatural birth and it comes through supernatural growth. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 11, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, 
that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. It is given spiritually, and God-given wisdom is given sufficiently. <clears throat> if you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally. The text here reads, if any man lacks wisdom, coming to the knowledge that you really don't have the wisdom that you need, then let him ask. So what a comfort it is to know that there is no situation in your life for which he is not adequate. An all-wise God foresees our lack of wisdom and stands ready to lavish it upon us if only we will ask. Our trouble is we fail to ask, or if we do ask, we ask what the Scripture calls a miss, not genuinely believing that we are actually needy in this particular area. Immature people always think that they know everything. That's the way it is in physical life, and that's the way it is in spiritual life. It may be that you may feel like the prophet Eli of old, that heaven is just closed for business. You can't seem to get an answer. A word from heaven was rare in those days. The word to us right now is ask in faith, nothing wavering. Ask in such a way that, that you know that you will get an answer. And if it is wisdom you are asking for, ask in faith, believing, and the scripture says you will receive. That's the source of wisdom. And then there's the supply of wisdom. This divine wisdom. <clears throat> now, when I was 10 years old, my grandfather wrote me a letter asking me to read the first chapters of Proverbs on a regular basis. And I know of people who read one chapter every day. That's 31 days of reading Proverbs. So let's break down what we earlier read in Proverbs chapter 2. What Solomon said about wisdom. And he would be one to know we must receive the wisdom of God. So you've asked for it. If someone offers you a gift, you have an opportunity to reject it or receive it. So first we receive the wisdom. My son, if you receive my words, the biblical aspect of receiving is much the same as the biblical aspect of giving. Graciously, not begrudgingly. We're not receiving this wisdom so we can win an argument or some debate, some dispute. We acknowledge God for what He is and who He is, and we're to receive His wisdom as it is revealed in the Scriptures and in His Son with ready and repentant hearts. We must receive wisdom from God. We must retain this wisdom from God. He says, next, we treasure and treasure my commands within you. <clears throat> See, it's one thing to receive, but quite another to retain. The Word of God. Most of us are guilty at one time or another of hearing and forgetting. James 1.24 compares this lack of retention to a man who looks in a mirror, sees his need, and yet he walks away forgetting what he saw. Receive, retain, we must respect the wisdom of God. It's in verse 2 of Proverbs 2. So that you incline your ear to wisdom, to incline your ears to respect or regard what God is saying to you. If you're going to come to terms with God, you must take Him seriously. There's not a lot of presidents that we can quote from our time, but President Woodrow Wilson said, I'm sorry for the man, I'm sorry for the men who do not take the Bible and read it every day. I wonder why they deprive themselves of the strength and leisures it affords. Then he went on to say, there is no other book that yields its treasures so personally or fits itself so intimately to the one who is seeking guidance. The Bible has been called a miracle of literature, a perennial stream of wisdom, a revelation of mystery, an infallible guide of conduct. <clears throat> One old preacher said, No man is uneducated who knows the Bible, and no one is wise who is ignorant of its teachings. 
we receive, we retain, we respect. We must relate to the wisdom of God and apply your heart to understanding. This is the whole purpose of seeking divine wisdom. The pressures and the problems of life are just too great for us, particularly in these days. And without heavenly wisdom, we're not going to be able to cope. Stress is killing people. Why can't we learn to relate the wisdom of God to every task that's before us? God knows exactly what He's accomplishing in and for us and ultimately through us. When I'm not close to God, my, pra my prayers sound something like this. Lord, remove my afflictions and burdens. Now, if I receive the wisdom of God and I have retained the wisdom of God, I've respected the wisdom of God and I relate to the wisdom of God, my prayer sounds something like this. God, give me grace to face the disappointments, the disasters, the defeats or whatever my dilemma may be. Romans 8, 37 says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Then on top of that, we must request the wisdom of God. The wisdom comes, out, comes when we cry out to God, when we call out to God, when we pray in the only name that constrains the heart of God, that wonderful name of Jesus. We must ask in faith, believing we will not get this wisdom by default. We have become a nation of people feeling that we're entitled to things other people have and we deserve good things just as much as those who have what we want. We don't deserve this wonderful gift, this gift of wisdom. If we were entitled to it by virtue of our being, we would have it naturally. However, He has promised to give that wisdom that we need if we ask for it. And He will give it liberally. And He won't get tired of our asking the request. We must require the wisdom of God. Verse 3 of Proverbs 2, Yes, if you cry out for discernment, the wisdom of God is promised us through God's Word. The crying out for discernment is a fact is in fact a requirement on our part. You just have to make up your mind. Require this kind of wisdom. God does not tire of giving the wisdom to us if and when we cry out for it. We must research the wisdom of God. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 4. If you seek her as, as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures... And research may sound something like this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. As it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Research. God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. And the Spirit does the research of those wonderful treasures in heaven as we research through His Word. And even as Paul puts it, it's the deep things of God. So we've looked at the source of wisdom and we've looked at the supply. And let's just finish by talking about the satisfaction that we get from this wisdom Wisdom in the final analysis is the right application of knowledge, as we said before. It is possible to have knowledge without wisdom. But it is impossible to have wisdom without knowledge. Proverbs 2.5, Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. That term, fear of the Lord, is very important here. The writer for the Hebrews quotes King David when he says in Hebrews 13, 6, so we, may come, so we may boldly say the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So we establish quickly that our fear is not of man. However, proof positive that wisdom is missing 
in our highly educated time if there is no fear of the Lord. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it's good or whether it is evil. So there's the fear of God that's so important. And then finding the knowledge of God, verse 6 of Proverbs chapter 2. For the Lord gives wisdom, from His mouth comes knowledge and understanding. The Lord Jesus wants to be your schoolmaster. He wants you to learn. He is the master teacher. He assumed flesh and he walked among men and he taught us that he is the way, that he is the truth and he is the life. And he, he's the only way to the Father. Let the Lord be your schoolmaster. Let him be your savior. Proverbs 2, 7, he stores up sound wisdom for the upright. And how can you possibly be upright without Jesus? Soundness is related to health and salvation. And you hear this truth in Paul's writing to Timothy, ascribing sound doctrine to those seeking to find the knowledge of God. Let him be your schoolmaster. Let him be your savior. Let him be your shield. That's in our final verse in Proverbs chapter 2. It's verse 7. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He is our shield. He is our shepherd. He is our safety. Sealing what we have entrusted to Him, Ephesians 1.13, In Him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The ever-increasing knowledge engulfing this world will never, ever lead mankind to the knowledge of the truth. But the saving truth, gift-wrapped in the wisdom of God, can be yours for the asking. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be open to you. Remember Satan deceived Adam and Eve. They acquired the knowledge of good and evil, as he suggested. But if you go back and read that story again, you find that wisdom was not part of the deal. The world may be full of all kinds of knowledge and learning. But if you want the knowledge of God to fill your heart with wisdom, you're going to have to talk to him about it. The world cannot give you this wisdom, but he can, and he has promised that he will. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you again for your word. Thank you for the how it addresses our particular need at our particular time. And this world's wisdom is so far from the wisdom from heaven. And we are really odds with the world right now. And the world is at odds with us. Give us the wisdom to be harmless as doves, but help us to be strong as serpents in this time that we are facing so much opposition. God grant the strength, the wisdom that we need right now. And for that person who has never trusted you as their Lord and Savior, may they do so now. And then they can seek the wisdom that's from above that is so foreign to this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.